It is time to expand. I wanna see what it would take to live off grid. And I don't have enough space for all the solar panels and inverters I'm trying to test. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. Let's expand this array. My first ever YouTube video was the install of this original nine kilowatt array. And I used this unique racking system from ReadyRack, which uses ground screws to secure the racking instead of the typical method, which would require digging two foot diameter, seven foot deep holes and filling them with concrete. Eliminating the concrete made it cheaper and the screws are fast and easy to drive with a Bobcat. Or in my case, I just made an adapter for my tractor's post hole digger. I don't have any affiliation with ReadyRack and I don't earn anything if you use them. But full disclosure, when I called them to get the materials to expand, they did offer to send them to me for free. So a big thank you to ReadyRack for supporting our next round of experiments. This screw system is what makes the ReadyRack system so DIY friendly. ReadyRack can engineer a solution for your specific soil conditions. The length of the screw and the diameter of the helical can be adjusted for frost depth and soil conditions. There's even this massive ground screw for rocky soil types. And this thing is a beast. The bolts and stabilizing cables for each segment come all bagged together. All the spacers come in a little bag and they have a slit so that they'll slide over easily. And I like to put a little screwdriver in there so that I can twist it a little bit, makes it easier to put on. And I can just slide it right on, line up over the holes and it's ready to install. The steel posts have a very heavy galvanized coating. Mine's been installed for three years and I don't have any rust on it anywhere. All the hardware is stainless steel and it has a Loctite coating on the end to make sure nothing comes out. There we go, all assembled. To save time during install, I can mark the approximate depth I'm going to run the screw to so I'll know where to stop. After some quick and easy assembly with a single bolt and a PVC spacer, our six screws are ready to go. All right, I had to rip out all the test fixtures that I had mounted over here at different angles so that I can extend my array. If I were starting from scratch, I would need to find due south and I want solar south, not magnetic south. So I would stick a pole in the ground, make sure it was perfectly vertical, then find the time of day for my geographic location where the sun is at solar noon. And then from that stake, I would mark a point at the shadow and that would give me due south. And then if I wanted some angle off of that, like southeast or southwest, I could just take an angle. In my case, I already have my array set. Now I can just use a string line and extend my array out this direction. Limiting factors are I have a swale on one end and a drain tile running through the middle I need to straddle either side of. Here I can mark the end of the array and the line with the string. And from here, I can make sure that everything stays right on that string and just measure the position where I want to put the posts with a tape measure. Now I've marked all the locations for my posts. Now we just need to drill them into the ground and set our rack up. We placed the point of the screw at the flag position and used a magnetic two-way level to make sure the post stays perfectly plumb as we drive it. Post hole diggers move on an arc, so we paused every once in a while and adjusted the tractor position to make sure and keep it plumb all the way down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're too far off, the vertical post will tilt off angle and make it difficult to assemble the rest of the bracing. If your ground is fairly flat like mine, you can use the tape method to set the height relatively close, then use a string line from your first post to your final post in the section to set the final height. There is some height adjustment available in the purlins if you're off, but try to get it within half an inch. You may find it easier to set the corner post first and then fill in the middle. Pro tip, make sure that the final position of the screw has the bolt hole facing east-west or the bolt for the brace won't line up. If you're having trouble getting your bolt holes perfectly aligned with your array, you can simply take a piece of scrap pipe and drill two holes in it. One hole for the bolt that's gonna drive the pipe and just use your 5 8 bolt for that. And then a larger hole that you can use for a landscape stake. That works as a nice large wrench you can back the post out or turn it a little bit deeper to raise or lower the stake, or just use it to tweak the angle and get your screws lined up. And that worked pretty well for me. I'm just gonna use this heavy duty weed block fabric and put it down over the grass before we build the rest of the frame up. Then I'll put some gravel on it. That'll help make sure that no weeds grow up underneath that would require a lot of extra maintenance. And I don't wanna to have to do any maintenance. So let's get this laid out. I had a suggestion in the comments, instead of using a razor to cut an X for these, use a torch to burn through it. So let's see how that works. That works pretty well. I'm gonna bias it 
to the lower end of the panels a little bit more than I did last time because there's plenty of space on the backside to mow, but I don't like getting up close to the edge when I'm mowing. So I'll pull this out just a little bit. It'll be about three and a half feet past the posts. Nice. Well, that torch method worked pretty well. That was really quick and easy. My tarp's a little short of where I want to be. I'm going to have to get a little bit more, but this will get us started. So I'm going to bring in the gravel. All right, we have all the materials for the racking setting out here ready to put together. All of the hardware for each one of the sets is in one bag, so it's really organized and easy to put together. The connectors for the east-west purlins all come in a box with the bolting hardware for them and the connecting brackets. So let's get started putting up the vertical poles. As long as you faced all of the bolt holes in your screw assemblies east-west, the poles are very easy to assemble with just one bolt through the bottom hole. Short poles on the south side and long poles on the north side. Now that the posts are in, we're gonna put the cross braces on. To do that, we just need to slide the clamps down the posts. The easiest way to do this is just to take a simple socket and slide it into the end of the bracket. And now they'll slide up and down the post very easily. Then I can set it, it'll be about seven inches down. Pull the socket out and it stays in place. So I'll slide the brackets on all the posts and then we'll set this bar in. For these ones, we'll use the galvanized bolts. I set the bracket about five inches off the top of the post Check your plans, it may be different for you. And in my case, my posts are a little closer than they should be, so I can move this bracket down if I need to in order to get the pitch just right. Then I'll temp set this side. Then we'll just pull the post until it's perfectly plumb and attach the top bracket. Okay, and then I can tighten the bottom. There we go. Put the north-south purlins on now that our posts are in and perfectly plumb. For my particular set of plans, I'm shooting for 30 degrees and that means I'll use this center hole on the lower set of holes. We'll temp set them all and then run a string line. And if something's slightly off, I can jump to one of these other holes or slots. So you stick the bolt through the post first. That makes it easy to then just come up and hang the purlin and temp set a nut. And then I can just swing it up and do the top. Stick a bolt through. I'll temp set it there. I'll check for plumb, which is dead nuts on. And now I can check my angle using this angle gauge, which is 31, so it's slightly high. So what I can do is go to the slot So I can maintain my plumb bar. And then now what am I at? 30 and a half degrees. So that's within half a degree. That's fine for getting ourselves all temp set in. And if we need to make another adjustment, we will. Okay, put the final one on and we'll run our string line. Now I can take a string and connecting to my previous part of my array, I'll run it across to all of these purlins and make sure that it's all flat and aligned. It is really, really close. I'm using my string line and lining it up through the center of one of the holes because the east-west purlins need to line up with these holes. And then I go all the way down and make sure that every one of them is exactly in the same line. Then when I put my purlin on, it'll be perfectly straight because that's exactly where the brackets for the solar panels will go. So then those will be perfectly straight. All right, now it's just a matter of extending our east-west purlins off the ones that are existing and we'll use the connecting bracket for that. So to start with, I'll just attach the connecting bracket to the existing purlin. Then I'll be able to just set the next one right inside of that. All right, with the extension bracket set, I can just set my east-west purlin in that bracket. All right, we have a special nut that goes in the channel of the north-south purlin. There we go. Now I'll just put the next bracket on and we'll extend it all the way down. I temp set the east-west purlins to the north-south cords so I can go back and sight down them to make sure they are perfectly straight. And I can also adjust as needed to ensure the proper pitch between the north-south cords. 
Now that the poles are assembled and plumb and all of the bolts are tightened, we can go ahead and put on our stabilizing cables. Now these don't have to be super tight, they just prevent excessive movement. We'll put these in an X pattern, up, down, up, down, across the array, both front and back. And one pro tip, don't forget to slide these brackets on before you put your north-south purlins on or you'll be bending every one of them to slide them over the pole. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of this pole. One end of the cable has a loop. So I'll feed the bolt through. All right, this one's gonna be at the bottom of the pole. And I have one going the other way. So I'll go ahead and get it roughly set. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way up yet until I get the other end of the cable on. Before we slide the cable through the bolt, we put the gripple on one side of the cable. Now I can wrap it through. And slide the other end through, just like that. And if you do what I just did, then you need the key, because I pulled it too tight. And if you pull it too tight, there's a key you can slide in the hole that will release it. Allow us to get it all the way back up there. I'm gonna snug that up. But still leave it free so I can tighten that cable. Now I'll pull on the cable, make sure it's as tight as I can get it. Then I can go ahead and snug both ends. Then I'll just take the excess cable and wrap it around and then zip tie it. And then I'll trim off the zip tie. We're good to go. So we can, you can see we go from the bottom of one post to the top of the next. And we just continue that pattern all the way along the array. To start setting your panels, confirm your available linear feet of racking by adding up the total width of all of your panels plus the fastener gap between them. Make sure you have an additional two to four inches at each end for setting the end clamp. Start two to three inches in from the end with your first panel using the end clamp assembly. Set the panel as parallel as possible with your east-west purlin. Once you've put on a couple of panels, you can go back and adjust them both if you're not tracking straight. As you go, if you find that you're starting to track slightly off, don't go back to the beginning. If you're starting to track uphill, for instance, make a small 1 32nd inch or 1 16th inch gap at the top mid clamp to make a small correction. Your goal is to move back to straight. You don't want to overcorrect and start going downhill or you'll just start chasing a wave up and down as you go. Once the first panel is set, place the spring-loaded mid clamp next to it. Set the next panel matching the bottom, pushing it up against the first panel and tighten the bolts. Work your way down to the end and complete the row with another end clamp assembly. If you're using microinverters or optimizers, you can place them before or after you place the panels, depending on your mounting method. ReadyRack provides the fasteners depending on the modules that you're using. When setting the top row, find a spacer that will hold a gap of about three quarters of an inch. Then you can simply slide the top panel in and rest it on the spacer to set each panel. If you're using standard PV modules, it's easiest to place the bottom row with the wiring module oriented towards the top, and the top row with the wiring module oriented towards the bottom. That way, all the wiring will be much more convenient to access. One of the few negatives of this system is the clamps are not self-bonding. However, it's not a huge deal because ReadyRack provides these simple crimp-style bonding straps from Dynabond. They have very sharp teeth that cut through the anodized coating connecting each panel to the one next to it. You can push them on or use a rubber mallet to set them. They are very difficult to remove, so put them on last. To complete the bonding for each string, you will connect a number six copper conductor to the frame of the final panel in the string, and then connect that panel to the entire racking system 
From there, you'll go on to the rest of your grounding system. If this was helpful, you should check out one of these complete install videos I've linked here. I have links to ReadyRack in the description, as well as lots of helpful content on home solar. My website, projectswithdave.com, is a great place to find discounts, material lists for previous projects I've done, and lots of other helpful information. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the results of this expansion and progress towards living off-grid. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.